Hey guys, Eric from JDM Legends here. We're here in Salt Lake City, Utah, here in our shop, checking out our latest build, which is a 1973 Nissan Skyline 2000 GT. So this car, like a lot of the cars that we, we work on here at JDM Legends, was never offered here in the United States. So that's why it's right-hand drive. Um, that's why they have these fender mirrors. This is also kind of uh, a design change from the earlier model, the 72, where you see a bit more of a, a muscle car-esque, you know, sort of vibe, if you want to call it that. It's interesting to take this to a car show and, and sit back and listen to people guess what it might be or say what it might look like. Um, you get a lot of uh, comparisons to like the AMX Javelin. You can see uh, muscle car influence in this, in this car. You know, the Japanese cars came with a lot of technology. This has independent rear suspension. Um, it had an overhead cam engine. One of the biggest factors that really makes these cars perform so well is this is probably a thousand pounds lighter, give or take a few hundred pounds, than, than a Camaro of the similar era as well. All right, so this model was referred to as the Ken Mary Skyline, which referred back to the ad campaign going on in Japan in the era that had a young couple by the name of Ken and Mary that uh, drove this generation of Skyline around and had picnics and went to the beach and and that just became the nickname of this car. Um, first and foremost, number one thing with any Japanese car of this era is finding something that is solid. Um, so this was a really, really good uh, candidate for that. He wanted somebody to, to have, you know, a true 70s look so that anything we did modification-wise, you know, looked like it could be within that period. We, we wanted to really kind of keep the true spirit of, of the way this car would have been built in the 70s, but with a little bit more modern technology. So this one here, like I said, is specifically a GT model. Now to go through the different models they had in the era, you know, they had sedans, they had two doors. So the top of the line was referred to as the GTR. Um, that one came with a twin cam, what they called an S20 engine, a triple carburetor, dual overhead cam, four valve per cylinder, um, incredible car for the time. The only problem with that car was they only sold 197 of them before the uh, oil crisis hit. So that being said, uh, a true GTR is fetching numbers at, at about $300,000, $350,000 plus. So this is what we would refer to as a GTR Tribute. Now, the reason to go with a Tribute is for quite a few reasons. I mean, for one, if you're going to take this car to the canyon or the track, the big part of this is these overfenders here. Now they put these on for racing. Um, on your factory car, you would have a straight surf line in the rear fender that would, that would limit you to about a seven and a half inch wide wheel. With these overfenders, they allow us to run a 10 inch wide wheel in the rear and a nine and a half foot inch wide wheel in the front. So definitely helps out if you're going for more of a performance oriented uh, type of situation, which is what these cars excel at. So that's what we've built this one for. So in addition to the over fenders, you also have a different grill, front spoiler, rear spoiler, um, some specific interior bits, uh, gauge clutch is a little bit different. Um, but overall, I mean, it, it completely changes the look of the car and that's why these tributes are so, so common uh, to get in Japan. So this one being a GT model uh, would have meant that it would have come with a two liter single cam engine that made around, I believe, 115 horsepower, nothing terribly exciting. Um, we've gone, you know, more of kind of the hot rod route here, resto mod if you want to call it that. Um, we've gone with sort of the, the biggest of the biggest as far as the engine that would go into this chassis. We started with the base of this one out of a Nissan Maxima diesel, which has a taller deck height. And that in conjunction with the stroker crate allows us to stroke this one up to a 3.5 liter. Um, we worked on Rebella Racing with this one. And, um, you know, lots of head work, big cam, a whole lot of magic going on in that, in that engine, but it now makes just under 400 horsepower at the crank. So you can imagine, I mean, it's uh, quite a bit different from the 115 horsepower it came with from the factory. We have also adapted a 350Z six-speed transmission, which is awesome to have in a car like this. And being that we wanted to have it be a, you know, track day, weekend, canyon sort of car, we've gone through and we've done coilovers, uh, four piston brakes in the front. In the rear of the car, we've converted to a fuel cell. That's partially for safety. But the other reason for doing that is that this car was originally carbureted. And on this one, we have converted it to fuel injection. So inside the car, you know, as you can kind of see, uh, we've gone with a real Spartan minimalistic type interior. Um, 
we've got some vintage uh, bucket seats that were actually sold by what they called Dotson Competition back in the day. Um, in addition to that, we've got a back half roll cage for safety, some five point harnesses. We've gone with some aftermarket gauges so we can keep an eye on the engine. And then uh, some custom floor plates that we made here as well. So this car is actually owned by a local customer of mine that owns uh, Race Deck, which is a garage flooring company. He had sort of settled on the, the Ken Mary body style because he really liked the, the muscular looks of this, this generation. I'm, I'm gonna end it there. <laughs> <laughs>